Hello there, welcome to this video where it's all about the thumb. Why? The thumb is quite often neglected in technical exercises. Normally people are only thinking about the four fingers. And I thought, well, you know, it's List's birthday today. And List always talked about absolute finger independence, meaning every finger can basically do what any other finger can do. And uh, yeah, he was very aware that the thumb is an important finger. It's also important because, not just for playing, but because it helps you to balance your hand. This is quite interesting. As you do these technical exercises, and I recommend doing them for you know, quite a while, days, hours, you know, in the future, what you'll find is that your other fingers will naturally find their own settled location above the keys. Sometimes when I do these exercises, just the tips of my fingers can feel the other keys just a little bit, but they're not actually playing them, of course. So there's three ways that you can do these exercises, but of course personalize, uh, change the dynamics, use time signatures, different time signatures, use different rhythms, uh, use different amount of octaves, stay on one note for longer, use combinations. Personalization is key, but the general three things to do are three octaves, which I'm going to demonstrate, of the chromatic scale up and down. Then you can use the major scales up and down, two or three octaves, and then taking different chord types. So not only are you getting your thumb independence, thumb strength, and hand position sort of refined, you're also drilling major scale mastery, which is always important. I have a playlist on major scale mastery. And you're also uh, getting chord types drilled as well. Uh, by seeing them in different places. By doing this over two or three octaves for the chord types, you're also learning how to see shapes with your eyes and then your hands follow, which is all of this all together, so important for your performance uh, abilities and fluency. So it's all about the thumb. The first thing, of course, is the chromatic scale. So I'll just do maybe two octaves of that, only using the thumb. But I'd like you to do this to feel how your other fingers respond. It's not just a boring exercise. This is an observation. It's a, it's a sort of a revelatory thing to do. So we'll start down on C. Aim for steadiness. The right hand is leading, the left hand is following. Now I can just sometimes feel my little finger touching a note. On my right hand, I can feel my little finger touching, sometimes my ring finger. sometimes my middle finger, but they're not too low. Uh, recently I saw a comment where someone said their finger is too high when they're playing. Well, so what? That's okay, that's your natural hand position. That's okay, when you need it, it will come down. But if you insist on it being a bit lower, then why not try these thumb exercises and consciously see if you can lower your little finger. <clears throat> so do this over you know, two or three octaves. I think three is good. And you'll really start to uh, feel what your other fingers do. So although it's about the thumb, it's actually just equally about the other fingers as well. And your other hand, your other fingers will just start to relax. And it's really, really good for your natural position over the piano. My hands are very, very flexible, very loose. And like this, with that gentle curve. Of course, before you do any technical exercise, you should also do your hand flexing exercise exercises, which I have a video on as well, but very quickly, I do a big stretch like this and a big squeeze uh, two or three times. Uh, then I do like a palm slapping. I do about 100, 150 until it starts to ache like this, about two per second. I do a claw like this, about the same 100, 150. Every day I do this. Uh, sometimes you might sort of roll a fist like this, which is a nice thing to do. Um, and, and a normal fist as well, of course. These are really, really good exercises to do. And I have a sort of a, like a, a wrist shake after each one for five seconds or so just to loosen up a bit. And I really do that every day. So that also helps with the flexibility. So there's your first thumb one, your chromatics. The next one is, of course, major scales. Uh, so I'll just go around them a little bit just to show you uh, the kind of fluency that you want. So C, C sharp, D, I'll just do a couple of them. But I'm noticing my other fingers, how relaxed they are. No rushing, just a natural limit. 
copy one more. Okay, that's nice. I don't have something called energy puddles, which I call energy puddles, which is there's no joint which is lower behind than the next joint. So there's nothing where my elbow is, of course, a bit high. My elbow is always a bit higher than my wrist. My wrist is a bit higher than my first knuckles, just even if it's a millimeter. The first knuckles are a bit higher than the next ones, and they are a little bit higher than the fingertips. So there's a gentle curve down. Very, very important. List always played with straight fingers, always promoted that. So you try and aim for that. Uh, so there's the thumb. But again, this is not just about the thumbs. This is really about noticing how the other fingers are kind of being left out. And this is really rare, isn't it? When you're playing the piano, normally all your fingers are doing things. In fact, maybe not even the thumb very much, or just once sometimes. Normally it's about the other fingers. But this is really about the thumb. And you'll notice it, it's really interesting. It's a psychological thing. You'll see what I mean when you do it. Next thing is your chord mastery. So you might, you could do this in different ways. I think the best one is to take a different chord type each time you go into a new key. So I'll just do that spontaneously. But of course you could take one chord type and go through all the keys, another chord type, all the keys, personalize. So let's just take a major seven chord. I'll maybe do two octaves. So you get a nice bit of interval jumping here. C major seven, now in D sharp, I might do a dominant seven. So you can only do that if you can really see the chord shape. So you're drilling the chord shapes as well. D, let's do D minor 7, D minor 6. That's a really good one to do. Let's do another one, D diminished. On E, let's do minor 7. All about the thumb, F minor 7 again. F sharp, let's do uh, a sixth chord. Get all the black notes. There's the last one. In fact, you could even do this over only the black notes. Might be a bit of fun. Just do anything that you can. Personalize your own ideas using your thumbs. And that really is a good thing to do. So hopefully you'll do that and post your progress uh, and comments. So as always, like, comments, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcast, new playlists. Be sure to click the bell and I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.